Well, if I'm going to start a 30-day death metal challenge, I should probably participate too. So each day I did listen to a different death metal album that I've never heard before. I jotted down some notes on each. And in this video, I briefly discuss all 30 of those choices. And who knows, maybe you'll find something to listen to by watching this. So yeah, stick around. So this was pretty fun. I mean, 30 death metal albums that I've never heard, listened to in 30 days. And now I get to share that list and some thoughts on the albums with all of you. The albums I chose for the list were released between 1992 and 2014, which includes the years that I wasn't really listening to death metal. You see, one of the challenges here for me was to pick albums and bands that fell into a time period that's pretty much a blank spot for me, mostly the 2000s, a little bit of the 2010s. So this is me filling in some gaps. Um, breaking down the bands by nations here, we have seven bands from Sweden, five from the Netherlands, and eight from the United States, while the remaining ten are from other countries. Also, these are the streaming versions of these albums, so some of them might include bonus tracks, just in case you're more of a vinyl guy like me otherwise. And of course, the usual disclaimer, these are my choices, my ratings, and my opinions, which means they might not necessarily be yours. So do keep that in mind when you hit the comments section. So with that, let's get to the list. First up is Hate Eternal with Phoenix Among the Ashes from 2011. This is the fifth album for this death metal band from the U.S. Uh, the music is pretty blasty. It's uh, a more chaotic, morbid angel, which I don't think is an accident because of Eric Rutan being in this band. Uh, the very reason I wanted to check them out, definitely Eric Rutan. Might also explain some of the more technical guitar parts here as well. Uh, definitely better than what Morbid Angel was putting out at the time, which I think was their I album, however you pronounce that damn title. Favorites here are Haunting Abound, The Fire of Resurrection, and Hate Swarm. This one, I'd definitely give it 7 out of 10. Next is The Crown with Crowned in Terror from 2002. This is the fifth album for this melodic death thrash band from Sweden. Definitely leans more towards thrash, almost crossover at times, but has clear death metal elements as well. They get the mellow death tag, but it's definitely a more aggressive form of that. Uh, they have a lot more in common with a band like Cataclysm than, say, any Gothenburg sounding band, if that helps out any. Not crazy about the clicky drums, but the chugging riffs and whammy solos are a hell of a lot of fun, and they do make up for the other stuff to some degree. Favorites are World Below, The Speed of Darkness, and Death Metal Holocaust. Gonna give this one 7.5 out of 10. Next up is Bloodbath with Nightmares Made Flesh from 2004. This is the second album for this death metal band from Sweden. Cool melodic solos, though this isn't melodic death metal by any stretch. Uh, nice unexpected turns in some of the tracks, providing some further variety. Um, I do know that Nick Holmes takes over vocals in this band later on, and in fact, I now have their latest album, which is really great. Because of both records, I'm wanting to check out more of their catalog going forward. So favorites from this one are Brave New Hell, Eaton, and Year of the Cadaver Race. Gonna give this one 9 out of 10. Next up is Origin with Antithesis from 2008. This is the fourth album for this technical death metal band from the U.S. It is technical and chaotic, I should say. Tends to go at one blistering speed for the whole album with maybe a couple exceptions. Uh, pretty sure the drummer is a robot. Overall, not my bag. Uh, favorites here are Antithesis. That's pretty much the only favorite, really. And it is the slowest track by comparison. Uh, because of the talent here, it gets at least 5 out of 10. And next up is Obscure with Omnivium from 2011. This is the third album for this prog tech death metal band from Germany. So massive time changes and style shifts throughout. It reminds me a little bit of the band Cynic, at least the early material I'd heard. Though I do prefer the more straightforward moments on this record rather than the musical gymnastics I get elsewhere. Even with that, this is one of those albums that I'd have to spend some time with to fully digest, but I think I like it. Maybe? Not sure. Anyways, favorites include Ocean Gateways, Euclidean Elements, and Evum. Give this one a 7.5 out of 10. Next up is Necrophages with Onset or Putrefaction from 1999. This is their first album. It is technical death metal from Germany. Decent tech death, I'd say, with standard classic growl vocals. Uh, solos are pretty much the best parts of the tracks, to be honest. 
Uh, guitar work is occasionally impressive overall, but too erratic for my taste. Also, massive abuse of pinch harmonics, but the bass fills are really good, so there's that. Definite Cannibal Corpse and Deicide influence here, catching that here and there. Favorites are Mutilate the Stillborn, Advanced Corpse Tumor, and Fermented Awful Discharge. Give this one 7 out of 10. Next up is Repugnant with Epitome of Darkness from 2006. This is the first and only album for this death thrash band from Sweden. So noisy, cavernous, and thrashy death metal, definitely building upon the old school Swedish death metal sound here and there. Also faint hints of early Bathory. Uh, the horror sound effects are pretty fun too. Got some favorites, of course, Premature Burial, Spawn of Pure Malevolence, and Sacred Blasphemy. I'd give this one 8 out of 10. Next up is Decrepit Birth with Diminishing Between Worlds from 2008. This is the second album for this tech death metal band from the U.S. So, despite the inconsistent production on this one, the band is pretty tight and technical. Pretty blasty with tons of musical shifts. In fact, too many for me. Also, the vocals are truly monotonous here and not the least bit effective. Uh, this is a clear attempt at what bands like Atheist and Cynic, or even later Death, were doing, but not nearly as competent or interesting. Favorites on this one, I basically have none. I, I know a lot of people like this band, but I did not, at least not this album. So, since there is some talent here, I'm going to give this a 5 out of 10. Next up is Eucharist with A Velvet Creation from 1993. First album for this melodic death metal band from Sweden. Right away, the production is pretty bad on this one, especially with the drums. Also, screechy cavernous vocals that are reasonably effective, but they lack a certain punch to them. Likely, again, because of production. There also seems to be some doom creeping into this record. So, maybe call it lo-fi melodic death doom. Sure, why not? It does have a certain charm for its time, though not sure how it would hold up now. It doesn't hold up much for me. There are some interesting passages here and there, which are basically worth the listen. I'd say there's some good musical ideas here overall. Favorites are My Bleeding Tears, Floating and Into the Cosmic Sphere. I'll give this one a 7 out of 10. Next up is Deceased with Fearless Undead Machines from 1997. This is the third album for this death thrash band from the U.S. And yes, I'm going to admit it straight out the gate, this is my very first Deceased album. I know, they've been around forever. I also know that King Fally is a bit of a legend. All this is exactly why I chose a record from this band. Vocals are a bit between Kronos and a low-register King Diamond, at least that's what I get. Really digging the heavy metal leanings throughout, notably the solos. It really doesn't sound like 1997 at all, as this would be in perfect company with a lot of the 80s indie metal I listened to as a kid. It also has a whole lot of quirk to it, which I also dig a lot. It is 68 minutes long, so definitely prepare for a lengthy ride. Favorites are The Silent Creature, Fearless Undead Machines, and Night of the Deceased. I'm even digging the nearly 10-minute epic album ender, Destiny. So yeah, I need to buy this album. 9 out of 10. Next up is Demigod with Slumber of Sullen Eyes from 1992. This is the debut album for this death metal band from Finland. Definitely getting a strong current of death doom here amidst the occasional blast beats. Some nice doomy harmonics between the two guitars as well. Also dig how distinct each track is from the other, which isn't always the case with your standard cookie cutter death metal bands. Coincidentally, Andy over at the Cloudy Milder YouTube channel also picked this record for his own response to the challenge. Fair to say he was of two minds about it at best. I felt a little differently though. To me, this is a solid death metal record and I'm glad I heard it. Favorites are As I Behold, I Despise, Tears of God, and Fear Obscures from Within. Giving this one an 8.5 out of 10. Next up is Arsis with A Celebration of Guilt from 2004. This is their debut album. It is a technical melodic death metal band from the U.S., so here we have a proficient combo, I would say, of tech death, mellow death, and quite a bit of thrash. Super heavy, intense, and ever-changing riffs, even in the same song. Also some pretty precise and dynamic drumming here, which is challenging given the tech aspect of the music. I know this record has a lot of fans, and many consider it their best. I'm also willing to bet that Carcass fans might find something to like about this as well, as I'm also hearing a bit of that here and there. Favorites are Maddening Disdain, Worship, Depraved, and Dust and Guilt. Giving this one a 9 out of 10. 
Next up is In Flames with Lunar Strain from 1994. This is their debut album. It is melodic death metal from Sweden. So right away, this album is really folky in parts, uh, really annoying parts, to be honest. Getting past those, the heavy and faster tracks are more or less decent, but none of this album is really grabbing me. I know that In Flames changed a bit of it in their albums to follow, and I'm not a fan of that sound either, so not entirely sure if I'll be pursuing this one further, this band or this album. Uh, favorites are In Flames, Upon an Oaken Throne, and Clad in Shadows, basically the last three songs. Giving this one a 6 out of 10. Next up is Vader with Black to the Blind from 1997. This is their fourth album. It is Death Thrash from Poland. So one thing I found out while looking into this record is that it is not a favorite with many fans. Uh, I get some of that, but while the tracks are decent, they also seem a bit restrained and the thin production doesn't help either. But it is listenable for the most part with its tremolo riffing and insane drumming. Shades of Morbid Angel in parts as well if you're looking for that. Favorites are Fractal Light, Fetus God, and Black to the Blind. Give this one a 7 out of 10. Next up is Vital Remains with Dechristianized from 2003. This is the fifth album for this death metal band from the U.S. And yes, this is when Deicide vocalist Glenn Benton came in as their singer. In fact, this sounds a whole lot like Deicide throughout, but with some mid-paced moments of melodic riffing. Not crazy about the blasty and clicky snare sounds here and the drum mix in particular, but the guitar work is compelling at times and is likely the strength of this record. Tracks can get a tad overlong, but are also fairly competent. Favorites are Dechristianize, Devouring Elysium, and At War With God. Giving this one a 7.5 out of 10. Next up is Amon Amarth with Odin on our side from 2006. This is their sixth album. It is melodic death metal from Sweden, of course. So a bit of power metal style tremolo riffing here, joined with some harmonic leads in many tracks, though... Chugging riffs are predominant here. I also understand that much of this album leans more melodic than death metal, but I also have no real problem with that. Still heavy, still great riffs, and the vocals keep it rooted in death metal. Also, decent track lengths throughout. I only have their Berserker album, but I wanted to hear some more of their older material. Given this record, it looks like I'm going to continue doing just that. Favorites are Runes to My Memory. Asator and Gods of War Arise, giving this one an 8.5 out of 10. Next up is Septic Flesh with Communion from 2008. This is the seventh album for the symphonic death metal band from Greece. So we have a strong stress of the symphonic here in terms of an actual orchestra, but also in some choral parts and general song structure with guitar, drums, and bass. Dramatic throughout and almost cinematic at times. Also somewhat blackened and pretty blasty here and there. My only real complaint is that some of the orchestral parts occasionally feel shoehorned in where they might not belong. They can become interruptions instead of otherwise joining the natural flow of the tracks. Thankfully, the latter is more often the case. Also a few moments of clean vocals alongside melodic passages as well. Overall, death metal purists might actually hate this record. Favorites are Anubis, We Are The Gods, Persepolis and Narcissus, giving this one an 8 out of 10. Next up is Xenomorph with Necrophilia Mon Amour from 2005. This is their second album. It is progressive death metal from the Netherlands. So despite the somewhat goofy album title, we have some decent blackened death metal here with plenty of effective growls and blast beats. The playing is certainly tight, though not quite technical sounding, and even the progressive elements aren't showy or sterile. Bass work is particularly inspired at times. With all of this, the album still maintains an overall grittiness to it. Favorites here are Treblinka, Samiti, and Hang 'em High on Holocaust Stakes of Frozen Methane. Say that 10 times real fast. Anyways, I'm giving this one a 7 out of 10. Next up is Insomnium with Shadows of the Dying Sun from 2014. Their sixth album, it is Melodic Death Metal from Finland. So, not quite the standard Mellow Death album here, but there are definite moments of clean melodic vocals, acoustic passages, and some synths, as well as ponderous soloing throughout. Lots of stretched out chords and soaring notes for dramatic effect. 
The production is pretty darn clean as well. I definitely hear the talent here, but it's just a bit too saccharine at times for me. Favorites are Blackheart Rebellion, Collapsing Words, and The River. Gonna give this one a 6.5 out of 10. Next up is Gore Guts with Colored Sands from 2013. It is their fifth album. It is technical death metal from Canada. So in addition to some technical playing here, it's clear that there are moments of prog as well. Likewise, some atmospheric and even experimental moments. Occasionally takes some detours away from the death metal into some melodic, disjointed, and almost jazz-like directions. Uh, there's also an orchestral instrumental in the middle of the album. In short, it's a little all over the place. And I am thinking that Gojira fans might dig this, probably more than I did. Favorites are Forgotten Arrows, Colored Sands, and Absconders. Giving this one a 6 out of 10. Next up is the Monolith Death Cult with Triumvirate from 2008. This is the third album for this atmospheric death metal band from the Netherlands. Definitely here we're getting some inclusion of spooky techno keyboards and choral elements throughout. We also get heavy riffs and strong death growls as well. Drums are intense, but I would say a little high in the mix. We get some insanely fast whammy soling during some tracks as well. This really is an oddball little record, and it's a bit much at times with the techno synth and other related stuff in particular. It would have been a significantly better album without all of that. Still some great moments, but wish there were actually more of those. Favorites here are Deus Ex Machina, Master of the Brionx Forests, and Demigod. Gonna give this one a 6 out of 10. Next up is Interment with Scent of the Buried from 2016. This is the second album for this death metal band from Sweden. Well, they're definitely from Sweden with that ever-familiar Entombed and Dismember worship, though. To be fair, they were around at the same time as those bands, so there's that. Expect HM2 buzzsaw guitars and mid-range death growls galore, though more guttural in delivery and with a bit more punch at times than their elder scene mates. Also, many bang-worthy riffs. Overall, not strictly original, but very much enjoyable. In fact, I'm pretty sure that I want to buy this album. Favorites here are Sinister Incantation, Chalice of Death, and Dawn of Blasphemy. Giving this one an 8.5 out of 10. Next up is Nile with In Their Darkened Shrines from 2002. It is their third album. It is technical death metal from the United States. So first the complaints, the album feels too long, riffs overstay their welcome, and we get drumming that is often an excuse for gratuitous fills every so many seconds in some tracks. On the upswing though, there is a wealth of talent on this record. Everyone is consistently tight throughout all of the time changes. And the infrequent slower tracks of this album do provide at least some variety. I'm just saying it feels radically overindulgent and often a bit showy at times. Favorites here are Execration Text, Churning the Maelstrom, and Wind of Horus. Incidentally, three of the shortest songs on the record. As for rating, give this one a 6.5 out of 10. Next up is Ceremony with Tyranny from Above from 1993. This is their debut album. It is death metal from the Netherlands. Catching some early deicide worship here, including their murky production. Uh, vocals are passable, albeit a bit stilted. Though some cool change-ups are here that differentiate them from the aforementioned band comparison, it is fair to note that this came at the tail end of what is considered the classic era of death metal, and while the album is serviceable, it also sounds like what a lot of other bands at that time were doing, but some of whom did better. It's listenable, but not remarkable. Favorites here are When Tears Are Falling and Humanity, giving this one a 6 out of 10. Next up is Psychroptic with the Scepter of the Ancients from 2003. This is their second album. It is technical death metal from Australia. So very tight and chaotic tech death here. Vocals are all over the place, traversing hardcore, death metal, and black metal styles, even within the same song. Likewise, each song jumps around in terms of tempo and playing style. Lots and lots of stop starts, along with clicky drums. Bass is also absurdly low in the mix. Gotta say, though, impressive musicianship all around, but this largely feels bloodless and mechanical to me. Admittedly, I'm not a consistent fan of tech death, 
Some of it I like, but much of it leaves me cold, much like the material on this record. Favorites are Lacertine Forest and Skin Coffin. Going to give this one a 6.5 out of 10. Next up is God Dethroned with Bloody Blasphemy from 1999. This is their third album. It is Blackened Death Metal from the Netherlands. So vocals are slightly blackened at best, but they often sound more to me like classic era Milla from Creator. Clean vocal moments also here. They don't fit at all, notably in the first track, Serpent King, which is totally skippable. Once you get past that first song, though, the album improves greatly. Solid heavy riffing throughout with the occasional wailing melodic guitar work. Enough variety in that regard to keep it interesting. Favorites are Nocturnal, Boiling Blood, and Firebrand. Giving this one a 7.5 out of 10. Next up is Oppressor with Solstice of Oppression from 1994. This is their debut album. It is technical death metal from the United States. So although this is tech death, it's definitely filtered through some very raw and aggressive death metal with shades of Morbid Angel and Cannibal Corpse throughout. It's 1994. I get it. Drums are also a little bit high in the mix. Also, vocals are monotonous and likely the weakest link here. They're okay, but they're not the standout feature on this record. Rather, we get some cool guitar flourishes, some cool time changes and occasional dips into prog, intermixed with the fast and mid-paced death. Favorites are Devour the Soul, Genocide, and Rotted Paradise. Giving this one a 7 out of 10. Next is Soul Burn with Feeding on Angels. This is from 1998. It is their debut album. It is Death Doom from the Netherlands. So Soulburn was basically a spin-off band from Asfix when that band had a temporary breakup in the 90s. Also, no Martin Van Drunen here during this time, but certainly a whole lot of Asfix. Or maybe Asfix through a Bathory filter. Add to that some buzzy guitar tone and a bit more of a thrash sensibility to it. In short, if you like this era of Asfix, there's no reason why you wouldn't like Soulburn. Favorites here are Crips of the Black, Hymn of the Forsaken, and Storming Hordes. Definitely giving this one a solid 8 out of 10. Next up is Iniquity with Serenadium from 1996. This is the band's debut album. It is Technical Death Metal from Denmark. So, tech death of the brutal variety, though free of blast beat overload, detours into jazz or prog, or a sacrifice of heaviness for technicality in general. Plenty of heavy here with the crushing riffs and guttural vocals, some occasionally doomy atmosphere. Probably could cut back on the pinch harmonics a little bit, but it's not too bad. A minor complaint. Favorites here are Prophecy of the Dying Watcher, Insisted in Dormant and Retorn. Giving this one a 7.5 out of 10. Next up is Behemoth with the Apostasy from 2007. It is the band's eighth album. They are Blackened Death Metal from Poland. So we're definitely in the era of Behemoth that's leaning more death metal. But I'm also noticing the polished production and the more epic feel here. Still very blasty between fast and mid pace moments with varying solo speeds. Maintaining a sense of melody amidst the chaos with brief acoustic passages, ponderous leads, and a couple choral parts. And immediately I caught the vocal guest appearance on Inner Sanctum. It is, of course, the late World Dane from Nevermore and Sanctuary. It kind of works at best. And also, gonna say it, Christ Grinding Avenue is a silly goddamn song title. Just saying. Anyways, favorites on this one are Prom Ethereon, Be Without Fear, and Liber Theme. Giving this a solid 8 out of 10. So out of all 30 albums, the five that rank the highest with me are Bloodbath with Nightmares Made Flesh, Deceased with Fearless Undead Machines, Arsis with A Celebration of Guilt, Demigod with Slumber of Sullen Eyes, and Interment with Scent of the Buried. Probably should look into buying these sooner than later. Of course, I want to thank all of you who took this challenge, whether you made a video or you posted to social networks. Of course, there's no deadline for this whatsoever, so feel free to do the challenge, even if it's months or even years later. I will link my original video in the description of this video, so you can check out all the details. Also, I'm sure many of you are much more familiar with some of these bands than I am. You should let me know in the comments which albums of theirs I should check out next. 
or even albums of bands that I didn't mention. All of that is hugely appreciated. Of course, if you're new to the channel, just so you know, my name is Matt. This is the Accusation Network, where each and every week I do videos on metal vinyl collecting. I also cover the subjects of classic and modern metal in general. If you dig that idea, definitely give this video a like. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And of course, share these videos with all of your friends. Other than that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.